I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video I'm going to discuss containers found in Construct2, the HTML5 game creation tool. So first up I'm going to go and open up Construct and if you have the start page open simply close it by clicking on this cross up here, going to file, going to new and going to empty project. So this, <laughs> double clicking on it um, or clicking on open. So this is the empty project. I'm going to zoom out by holding down control and mouse wheeling back. Um, so what are containers? Well, containers are, I'm not sure what you'd call it, an attribute or um, an element or something which you can associate with objects to group together different objects within one another. Now containers have certain benefits in that it groups together different objects and the and construct two then views all of those different objects as one object in themselves. This enables you to create one object and have the other objects create automatically or vice versa if one's destroyed. So I'll just demonstrate that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click in the layout like so and then I'm going to scroll down and double click on sprite. I'm then going to draw, um, I guess, a chassis of a tank, which is usually um, what's used in this example. Um, let's just say nice square chassis, nothing fancy. Now this is the chassis of my tank and I'm going to go to behavior, press plus and I'm going to give this behavior of, um, let's see, car, so that it drives around like a car, so that if I were to run this layout I can then oops I can then use the arrow keys to drive this around like a car nothing special nothing fancy now this is a tank chassis but I want to have a tank turret placed on top of this so I'm going to double click go to sprite and I'm going to draw a tank turret so here's the tank turret and here's the cannon strange angle, normally you wouldn't have it at a, a strange angle, you'd have it at 0 degrees or 90 degrees and I'm going to place the centre of this at the centre of the turret now this is my turret and I want this turret to be placed in the centre of this tank chassis so I'm going to go to event sheets, I'm going to right click, click on add event click on system, go to every tick and I'm going to click on add action, click on the sprite scroll down to set position um, to another non object I'm going to choose that object, I'm going to choose the chassis sprite, click on done, and so every every tick, every tick, let's see this, um, the turret is positioned where the chassis is, so now it drives around like a tank, nice and simple, nothing special again. Okay, um, so if I just go back to event sheets, and I, I'll just add a group, and I'm going to call this example, and call this every tick and the reason I'm doing this group is just to show um, best practices within the videos and I'm also going to go and click on this and call this tank chassis um, I'm not sure I spelled that correctly but tank then turret so I've got two objects and they are associated with each other but if I were to destroy one of these objects the other one would remain and vice versa if I were to create one of these objects the other one would remain on top of that, if I, for example, selected both of these, right-clicked on well, copy, and then right-clicked on paste, and have two objects, when I run these, then I have a bizarre situation such as this. Two objects, and if one of these is destroyed, so if I selected one of these and destroyed it, it's likely the other one would be destroyed as well. Containers can help sort this out, so if I hold Control and Z to just remove that and do what I did, Select on the chassis, scroll down to container, click on create. I'm then going to place this tank turret within this chassis container. So now these two are linked um, so that if I were to destroy one of these, the other one would be destroyed. I'm going to double click, I'm going to go down to mouse, go to event sheet, and then add a group. I'm going to call this example on click. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Oh well right click on this, go to add, add sub event, click on mouse, click on on any click, on any click, um, click on
click on add action I'm going to destroy the chassis so I'm going to go down and click on destroy so that if I add so run the layout that on any click oops sorry I'm going to do it again on any click this tank is destroyed so it runs around any click bang it's destroyed but I only destroy the chassis however because the tank turret is located within the chassis within the container Construct2 views both of these as the same object and destroys them both. If I were to select on this and just remove this container, and you remove container quite simply by selecting one of the items within a container, so it could be the tank turret and I just scroll to where it says container, or it could be the tank chassis and I just scroll to where it says container and I click on remove, they're now not linked. So if I were to play this again, so what, oops, sorry. I keep on clicking on it to select the, the sheet. So while this is running, he's driving around, if I click, the chassis disappears and the turret stays there. So that's the benef one of the benefits of using containers. If I click on this and then press um, Control Z until the tank turret is added back to the container, and if I wanted to add another ob object, I simply click on Add Object and find the object within the um, pop-up window. I'm now going to right-click, click on Copy, and I'm going to click anywhere and click on paste. This time I haven't copied the tank turret but if I were to run this layout you'll find that the turret is automatically created. This is because Construct2 finds out they uh, would automatically create both objects if one of them is created so even when you create or you have an object within the layout view for Construct2 to create it will still um, use an event to create the turret where this um, <coughs> excuse me, where this, where, it, where its container is. The other thing which is good about containers is that to highlight and select um, objects within Construct2, sometimes you have to provide certain conditions. So for example, if these are all separated, I'd have to say when, on any click, if, I don't know, the chassis underneath my mouse X and Y position um, to create a condition, I can then select that one and then as a result select whatever's linked to it. If I use containers, I can actually select the container and then I can choose things within the container. And I'll give you an example. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to on click and this can be the left click and then copy and then paste. Control C to copy and Control V to paste, making sure they're in the same group. I'm going to change this to right click I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to click on add action and I'm going to go to system create object and I'm going to create this tank chassis and I'm going to set it to a random um, x, y, uh, x position so I'm going to start typing the word random you'll see that it's highlighted I'm then going to press enter open up a set of parentheses um, which are commonly called brackets and then within here yeah, I'm going to type in the number 0, comma, and then a larger number 400 so that a random number between those two um, values is chosen and I'm going to do the same for both the X position and the Y position so on every right click the tank chassis is created on every less left click the tank chassis is destroyed and I haven't selected the any tank chassis, chassis in particular so I'm going to right click on this, click on add, click on sub event click on chassis um, compare X if the X is less than 200 so I'm going to click on less than 200 and then I'm going to drag this down to this condition this means that when the mouse left button is clicked any tank chassis that meets this condition is then selected within the scope of um, uh, Construct2 it will then destroy all these tank chassis that meet this condition so the tank chassis which don't meet this condition they will be safe and won't be destroyed also when I right click um, the system is going to create the tank chassis at a random location so let's run this so if I left click um, there they're destroyed if I right click a random tank is created so if I left click again 200 is about here where the cursor is so when I left click any tank behind this um, is destroyed there we go but if I right click then I create a tank at a random location so you can see that um, if we 
go back to this, we can see that Construct 2 uses conditions to select certain objects, to place them within a scope. They then apply the actions to those objects within that scope by using objects. If one of the objects, sorry, by using containers, if one of the objects is within the, within the scope of the conditions that you have given, then all of the objects that are within that container are now within that scope. And so all of these actions apply to that uh, to those objects. And I'll give you another example. For example, if I go to layers, let's add another layer. Let's say it's layer one, and it's in position layer one over here. So we go to system, create object tank chassis, and then add an action. I'm going to go to tank turret. I'm then going to go to set size and set this to, I don't know, something small, 32 by 32 pixels. Think, looking at this, which tank turrets will be will have the size set? Will all the tank turrets have the size set, or will only the tank turret that is within the scope of this um, event and action have its tank turret set? Let's look. If we go to layer, then if we go to run, we have two tanks here. If I right click, I create a new tank chassis with a tiny little turret. However, the other turrets have not had their um, tank turret size reset only the new ones and that is because um, the scope for this event is the objects which have been created and in this case the tank chassis has been created it has a container so only the objects within that container are within the scope so that's another benefit of containers if you are, are to control if, if you use them to create an object like an, like an enemy tank for example you can then apply other actions only to those that which have recently been created and this is a really good um, and easy way to reposition the layers of your objects so, so for example I'll move this um, to layer and I'll move it to layer one so only the tank turret that's within the scope will move to layer one the other tank turrets will not so hopefully I haven't confused you with that. To basically summarize, um, both the objects act as one when they're within a container. And so if you write a condition to select one, you select both of them at the same time. Um, so there are three basic rules of a container. Um, the first one is, a uh, first rule is that when you create one object within a container, it doesn't matter which one, you create all of the objects. When you destroy one, you can you destroy all the objects. And if one object is picked by a condition such as tank chassis, is le its x value is less than 200, then all of those objects which are, are within that container are picked as well. Now, another thing you can do with containers is you don't just have to group objects of the same plugin type. If I double click and let's say I add an array, I can also select the object, go down to container. Oh, Sorry, I double clicked on something there. Okay, great. Ignore that bug. So, ignored. Uh, okay, I have no no idea what happened then, but I did something and it created a bug with Construct 2. So I've just um, opened it up again and I've set everything up again. So, what I was saying, if you double click and add another object such as an array, then you click on your object which is within a container and scroll down and I'm not, I'm not going to click anywhere I accidentally clicked on edit and it started going crazy anyway if you go down to container then click on add object then you can actually add other objects which aren't normally displayed in the layout such as an array and this will create a separate array for each instance of the container so for example if I had a, an event which randomly created enemy tanks they'd also create arrays this is another way to store instant vari well, variables of a time or data um, within these arrays and it can be useful therefore to do this um, I'll discuss arrays in another video I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching if you like this video please subscribe to my channel or visit my Facebook page thank you